Hello everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel So Little Time and my name is Karen. So I hope you're all doing really well and thank you very much for joining me today. So this is another episode of my So What's New, my crafting and sewing update. So I've got a few things to share with you today, but before I get stuck into that, I just wanna say that this is the second time of recording this video, as I did intend to have one uploaded before I went on holiday, and um, we've actually been on holiday for a week, but I was really nitpicky at myself on the video and just thought I looked really, really tired and was really waffly, so I decided not to upload it. But when I actually look back at it now, I think I was just being really stupid and I should have just uploaded it because I'm sure that you would have appreciated the content and wouldn't have noticed that I looked really tired on it. But I think I just felt really tired at the time of filming. Um, I hadn't been sleeping all that well. I think it was sort of leading up to us going on holiday and I was overthinking what I needed to take and getting everything ready in time. And also I've been doing quite a bit of training for the Leicester Half Marathon because that is actually taking place this Sunday. So yeah, I'm quite looking forward to that in a way. <laughs> um, so we've had quite a busy week then being away in Cornwall. So we didn't get our summer holiday this year because we were lucky enough to have it last year. So we just find that everywhere was booked up in the summer this year. So as our half term in October falls slightly earlier than the rest of the country, we were able to book that week in the same property that we went to in um, on our holiday in the summer last year. So that was really nice as we knew where we were going to and what we were going into. Um, so we actually stayed in a lovely house in Mullion Cove, which is on the Lizard Peninsula in Cornwall. It's a really lovely part of the country. It's right down the bottom end. So it does take quite a while for us to travel down there. So we always leave fairly early in the morning and have our sort of breakfast on the way down. Um, but luckily the property did become available a bit sooner in the day than we thought. So that was nice. And we were able to go on the beach as well. So I looked at the weather forecast before we left and we thought that it was going to rain <laughs> the whole week. But actually we were really fortunate and we only had about a day and a half of rain. So when we arrived, it was glorious sunshine and the boys were straight in the sea in their wetsuits. And I think apparently it was quite warm in the sea. I mean, I only paddled a little bit. I purposefully didn't take my swimming costume or anything because I knew I wasn't going to be getting in. It has to be absolutely boiling hot for me to get in the sea. Um, but they were in it every day and they absolutely loved it. If I can, I'll insert some video footage of them in the sea because they were just having a right blast. But it was nice for me to just sit on the beach and enjoy watching them. And Simon was in there looking after them and stuff because he doesn't mind getting in the cold water. Um, well, he does that on a day-to-day -day basis in his job anyway. So, you know, but yes, yeah, so that was the reason I didn't get a video uploaded beforehand. Um, just because I was nitpicky about the video and then obviously going on holiday and stuff. So I'm back now, back into the routine, boys are back at school. So I've got everything here to share with you that I've been getting up to over the last week or so. Um, but for, before I get into that, I'll just quickly tell you obviously what I'm wearing. You will probably notice that it is my newly made Friday Pattern Company sagebrush top. I absolutely love how it's turned out and I absolutely love this pattern. It has been a dream to sew, but I'm not gonna go into full detail about it today because as you know, I've done this in collaboration with Angela from Devon Thread Tales. So we're going to be bringing a video to you all about our tops and just to discuss basically what our thoughts are on the pattern and how we got on with sewing it up. And you can see the difference in each other's versions as well because we have, as usual, done completely different uh, sort of fabric styles and stuff. So yeah, we're really looking forward to getting that video filmed, which we should do so over the next week or so. So that will be coming to you very shortly. So yeah, keep your eyes out for that anyway. So if you remember, I made two Tilling the Buttons Agnes tops at the Crafty So-and-So camp early this year, and I didn't quite finish them, but now I finally have done that. So I think the last time I spoke to you, I hadn't got the neck bands sewn down and maybe I needed to hem them, I can't actually remember, but I've finally done that. So this is the first one and both of them, the fabrics are from Felicity Fabrics. I don't know if they have these in stock anymore, but you may be able to find them at other stockists. Um, so they're just a cotton jersey fabric and I absolutely love this autumnal floral colourway. It's really beautiful. And I have the navy version of this, which I made into my Lucida dress. And I'll insert a photo of that just so you can remember what that looks like. Um, but I really like this um, white version and it's just really nice to wear at this time of year. So I really like how that has turned out. Um, just to remind you how I do my neck bands, I sew them in on my sewing machine and then I overlock the um, seam allowance and then literally top stitch that down with my twin needle and then I twin needle my sleeve hems and also the bottom of the top as well um, and that just works out absolutely fine. For the measurement of the neck I actually 
do a calculation of, I think it's 70% of the neckline measurement. Um, yeah, so I think you times it by 70% for the neckline measurement, and then I add another 10 centimeters onto that figure. Um, so I don't actually include a seam allowance or anything like that. That's, that's just the sort of calculation that I do, but I'll put that in the description box below for you. So that's that one. And then the second one is slightly more vibrant. It's in this lovely spotty fabric, which has got all these bright spots all over it. Really, really like this colorway. It's really nice. And again, this is from Felicity Fabrics. So I just did the same, had to uh, sew down the neckline and finish that off. So I've been wearing these quite a lot recently and I really like them because I think they're perfect color for sort of autumn. And I've actually been wearing them with my um, Poppy Pinafore, which is by Jane at the Dressmaker's Closet. So this is the sort of burgundy color one that I did for the pattern test when she first brought the pattern out. And it's in this lovely cord fabric and it's got um, these lovely wooden buttons down the back. Uh, for this one, I made the size small, which is actually a little bit too big for me. Um, so I've actually sewn the buttons completely all the way through so they're not functional buttonholes or anything like that i just put it on and off over my head so i've been wearing it with this as you can see the colors match really really nicely if i try and hold them up together it's a really nice sort of autumnal color combination and also the other one goes really well as well because it's got lots of purple kind of spots on it so it just really goes nicely together I've also been wearing it with my um, raggy brooch, which is also by Jane at the Dressmaker's Closet. Um, and she sells these on her website if you're interested. So I will put that link in the description box below for you. But if you are really crafty like me, you can make your own. She's got a tutorial on her YouTube. So I'll link that as well. And I'm definitely gonna have a go at doing that. I think she just uses offcuts of fabric that she has left to make these. Um, so I really should start doing that myself as I always have quite a lot of offcuts. So yeah, that's really been a nice um, combination to wear. I do need to make myself another poppy pinafore actually because um, the other one that I made is more of a sort of summer version. So I could do with another autumn, autumn one really. I haven't been doing any more garment sewing over the last few sort of weeks really. I've been concentrating on doing some of my poppy treffery autumn embroidery club projects. So I'll show you what I've been getting up to with those. As you know, I completed the first project, which was the pin backed badges. Um, and I really enjoyed doing those. Unfortunately, I have lost one of the ones that I made. It was the strawberry one I was wearing on my coat when I went out for a walk with my friend and I got really hot took my coat off wrapped it around my waist and when I got back home the, the pin was gone I just got the back it was like stuck in my coat I did wander on down the road to see if I could come across it but I think I must have lost it earlier in the walk unfortunately so I just have to redo that one and um, so that was the first project that I did and then the second one is the falling leaves notebook cover so you basically buy a notebook to cover and you use the dimensions that Poppy gives you and the instructions um, to make it up. And I'm part way through that because I actually jumped ahead to the third project because I was more inspired to do that one. But I'll show you how far I've got with the falling leaves one. So I've embroidered all of the leaves onto my backing fabric and I've just used fabrics that I had. So it's not in the same colorway as Poppy has used on hers. Um, but I'm also a little bit I don't know, disappointed with the colour of these leaves. They're a bit too vibrant, I'd say. Um, and I think it would have been nice to have had a few more of the rust coloured leaves on there. But I'm really pleased anyway with how they've turned out. Um, so when you actually put it around the notebook, you won't see those sort of blank edges because it'd be folded around the inside of the, of the notebook. Um, and then my reverse is going to be my trusty ticking fabric, which will be featured in most of my projects, to be honest. Um, you know, as I've got that massive roll, it just works out that it goes with so much stuff. Um, but I'm really pleased with how that is turning out. I have just run out of black thread, so I haven't quite finished this leaf here. It needs to have the edging done as per this one. Um, this one, I actually used my old fashioned Singer sewing machine to sew this one. And I haven't used that for quite a while and I've gotten so used to using my Janome that I did actually find it quite tricky. And you use the foot pedal to make the needle go as fast, as slow as you want. And I think I'm not used to it because obviously on my Janome I can set the speed. And um, so I just pe press my pedal to the floor. So I think my, my foot gets a little bit heavy on the, the pedal and it was going quite fast. And I was a bit like, oh, out of control with it. And I you do use my hoop for using that machine um, because it just is, has a bigger throat area and it just enables me to have a little bit more control. Um, but I did find that the 
the singer does use up a lot more thread quicker and also I had a bit of an issue sewing or winding the bobbin actually so I don't think the tension was quite right so on this leaf in particular it's I don't know the tension's not right it just doesn't look right so that was a bit annoying I think probably would have had more success if I was just stuck with my genome but I was watching one of Poppy's videos and I just got inspired to um, have a go on the old-fashioned singer you know because that was why I had that singer in the first place given to me was to have a go at doing this style of stitching but yeah I just find it a little bit easier using my genome to be honest so that one will be finished next time I upload a video so I'll show you that when it's finished the one that I jumped ahead to is um, the Flutterby pencil roll project and I really really like that so I'll show it you sort of closed up so as you can see it's a fabric roll which is closed up with this webbing here and then it's got these lovely butterflies all over it so I'll open it up so you can see it in full and then on the front it's got all different types of butterflies and I just used some denim fabric that I already had and I absolutely love that colourway the way it makes all the butterflies kind of pop and um, so Poppy has done a magnificent job in sort of replicating what the butterflies look like in real life so you have here the cabbage white the common blue this one here is the red admiral and then this is the peacock and um, so I just used fabrics again that I'd already got so some of the colors aren't quite right the common blue should have been a light blue color so I've just used lilac and I didn't actually have any black so I had to use green for the red admirals but I think you get the overall effect of what the butterflies are supposed to look like and then on the other side you've got it where you it's called a pencil roll but I've actually put my um, my crochet hooks in there and you've got this flap at the top which stops them falling out when you roll the um it up together and then you create all these pockets to obviously add as many pencils or crochet hooks or whatever you want in there so i just added as many as i could to fit all those in and then you just roll it up and then clasp it together with um, the webbing and this webbing I actually already had in my stash as well I think it was wrapped around some fabric initially from first for fabrics so I'm glad I was able to reuse that so you just wrap it around like this a couple of times and literally just thread it through there to secure it and I think that makes a really nice gift for somebody as well it's a really easy construction to make this project um, so yeah I'll definitely be making some more for gifts for birthdays or Christmas presents or something I really enjoyed that project and the the butterflies they um they were quite tricky to sew i actually found i had more problem with the peacock ones i was using some blue thread as you can see here and that was actually a vintage thread and it did not like being used on like a fast needle and um, it frayed quite a lot and was screwing up at the back so yeah that was quite frustrating <laughs> So I think I won't be using vintage threads for doing that style of stitching. It's all right if you just do straight stitching and that kind of thing. But yeah, for, for that, it's not really very good. So that's really the only bit of sewing that I've been getting up to over the last few weeks. So not all that much, really. Um, but I'm hoping to pick it back up again now. I'm back off holiday and feel a little bit more refreshed. Um, so I have been doing a little bit of crochet. So the first thing I'll show you is I've started doing a cushion cover which is just a granny square cushion cover that I'm doing I was sat in the garden at the end of um, September when it was quite warm the boys were playing and I just felt like I needed to be doing something with my hands and um, so I got out some scraps of wool that I'd already got and started this up now I've done this slightly different to how I usually do my granny squares so usually when I do a granny square I have like three chains in the corner and then I have a chain in between each cluster but this time I've just done one chain in the corner and no chains between any of the clusters on the sides so it's just made it a little bit more of a com sort of compact uh, granny square and I quite like that the effect that it's given so I need to get some more mustard wool um, because I've run out of that so I'm just going to continue until it sort of fits the size of a standard square pillow insert and then I'll do the other side and then sew it all together and hopefully put it in my bedroom I think it might actually go quite well with um, my mustardy kind of bedspread that I've got here so yeah that's what I intend to do with that just using up scraps of wool really so I don't think I've showed you these before but these are the primrose wrist warmers that I have been making for Christmas presents I think I showed you the mustard version that I made for my sister-in-law well, these are going to be for my mother-in-law and they're in this lovely turquoise double knit wool by Stylecraft 
um, and they're a nice really quick sort of make and these are the Primrose wrist warmers by Jane at the Dressmakers Closet so again that pattern is available on her website so I'll link that down below. Really like making these, they're really quick to make and they just make really lovely gifts. I do need to make some more for myself actually because last year's ones have gone a bit bobbly so I'm going to make some more for me. Yeah, I really enjoy doing those, so I've been doing those as well. I haven't picked up my um, Granny Go Round jumper for a while, actually, but I have got it here to show you as far as I've got. I haven't actually done hardly anything since I last spoke to you, so probably just the length of the sleeve is a bit longer. Um, so at the minute, this is how it's currently looking. So I still need to do this sleeve on this side, and then this one is near enough done. I just need to do the ribbing at the bottom as per how I've done it at the bottom of the jumper itself. Um, but I need to try it on just to see what that length is like on me and see you know, if I'm happy with that or if I need to add a few more rows before adding the ribbing on. But now that we've, we're in the autumn, we've got the sort of cozy evenings, I will be picking that back up again. So it will hopefully get finished at some point this year, if not beginning of next year. Um, I do tend to um, be a bit slower with my sort of knitting and crochet projects just because they, they don't grow as quickly as obviously sewing does, do they? So yeah, I'll be getting on with that over the next few weeks anyway. So the next couple of things I want to share with you are a couple of things that I've won on Instagram recently. Um, the first thing is actually a bag pattern and it's called the Trap Eni Bag, which is by Incomplete Stitches. And they've sent me the A0 pattern sheet in the post and they also emailed me the PDF version so I could print off at my leisure. Um, I've not heard of them before and I think somebody actually tagged me in the post um, and I was you know, fortunate enough to have won the pattern. So I'm excited to try that out. What I will do is insert a picture of what the bag looks like. And I think I'm intending to make it as like a cosmetics bag or something like that. So I've not made a bag for quite a long time. So I'm excited to have a go at it. Probably not this year, it will probably be beginning of next year. Um, but she did kindly also include a label, uh, which just says incomplete stitches on it. So I'll incorporate that in the bag at some point and tag her in it so she can see my finished make. So yeah, that was really nice to have won that. Um, and then I also took part in sort of an Instagram challenge and it was run by Linda of um, So So Beautiful. And I'll put her handle across the bottom of the screen for you. Um, and she was basically running a challenge where you had to tag all your makes throughout the month of September. And then you were put into your, your name was put into a hat basically to win some of the prizes that were on offer. And my name was picked out and I won a £20 gift voucher for Crafty So-and-So in Leicester. So that was really nice. As you know, they're really local to me. Um, so I had to look through my fabric stash because obviously my first thought was, oh, what fabric can I buy? But I actually don't need any more fabric at the minute. I've got quite a lot in my stash. And so I decided to have a look at what else I could buy and I bought a new pattern. Now I've not bought a new pattern for a while and I have recently de-stashed some that I know that I'm not going to be using. So um, I bought the Grainline Studio Thayer jacket. So this is quite a new pattern to me. I've not seen this around very much, um, but it was purely by just browsing on Crafty So-and-So's website that I came across it. And then I had a look at the hashtag on Instagram and have seen some lovely versions. So I'll give you the description of what this jacket is like. It says, the Thea is a workwear inspired jacket that will take you from fall to winter with ease. It features a slight A-line shape, roomy patch pockets and inseam yoke pockets, two piece sleeves, and it is fully lined for plenty of warmth. Front princess seams ensure a great fit. Um, so as you can see, it is kind of sort of workwear styled, but the versions that I've seen on Instagram, a few people have made it in denim, and I really like that look. Now I wear my denim jacket quite a lot throughout the year, but coming sort of into this time of year where it's getting a little bit chillier, it's not really warm enough for me to wear out on its own. So I thought this would be a good alternative because it's fully lined. And it says that you could line it with a quilted fabric or like your Sherpa fleece, that kind of thing. So I'll be considering both of those options, you know, a quilted lining or Sherpa. Um, I probably will opt for the quilted, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to having a go at this. Now it's got an A-line shape to it as well, which is really nice for my figure. And it's got lovely pocket details on the front so you can add your top stitching and that kind of thing. So I'm just planning on using a standard sort of knit blue denim colour. Um, I'm not sure what colour top stitching I will do yet. I don't know if I'll just keep it plain or use the gold, I'm not sure. Um, but I have seen some lovely quilted fabrics around recently. There was one that Fabric Godmother was stocking that I really liked. So I might have a look at that. 
but um, yeah I'm excited to give that a go I don't know when I'll get onto it because I've got a few projects that I need to get out of the way first um but yeah that will be sort of coming up to the top of my list very soon so I'll be looking forward to sharing that with you but that was really nice to have won that and just to to purchase a pattern that's something a little bit different for me so moving forwards then what i'm planning to be making in the next few weeks firstly it's something that i shared with you before and it's the darling rangers dress by megan nielsen so i'm intending to make this version here i was going to make it sleeveless i'm now in two minds about that i might make it with the sleeves i'm not too sure yet um, but the fabric that i've got i've showed you before and it's this lovely cotton fabric which i got from felicity fabrics and they have gifted me this in exchange for a blog um, it is quite a sort of summery fabric but i'm intending to wear it with tights and boots and obviously a jacket with it and that kind of thing so I will be able to wear it throughout the cooler months um, but I'm excited to try that out because I've not made this pattern before I was really inspired by Sally of the secret seamstress um life of a secret seamstress I think is that right I've just completely gone mind blank there I'm really sorry Sally if you're watching secret life of a seamstress that's right <laughs> So um, she's made loads of these and has got a video all about the ones that she's made. So she inspired me to make it. And so Sally, I promise you will see me making this very soon. Um, so I'm going to get that done as that really needs to be sent off to Felicity Fabrics to get on their website. So excited to give that a go. And I'll probably wear a slip underneath it, obviously, because it is quite chilly for this time of year. And then I've also got a denim version of the Millie dress cut out. So firstly, I'll insert a picture of my summer version. Um, and I'm just going to be doing a plain navy version. So this is my summer version, actually. I've got it here. Um, this is the one that I made as the, um, was it a pattern test? Yeah, I did a pattern test for Julia at Bobbins and Buttons. And I just used this lovely fabric here. Now, I've wore it so much um, since I've made it when we have warmer weather throughout September and that kind of thing that the fabric has really washed out because I think when I showed it you before um, I did say that the fabric hadn't washed all that well well obviously with wear and washing and wear and washing it's gone even more faded especially on this uh, pink band I don't know if that's picking it up on the camera it does look a lot pinker on the camera than it does in real life um, but yeah so I'm going to be making just a, a straight plain denim version of that with the lovely patch pockets on the front but I thought oh there's a siren just going by um, sorry about that <laughs> lost my train of thought there so I'm making a plain version of um of the mini dress just in navy and I really think that will look really nice just a navy denim um and I've got all that cut out ready to go so that is also um gifted fabric in return for a blog post for Julia at Bobbins and Buttons so I need to crack on with that and I'm making to go with it a cocoa top in this lovely stripe uh, fabric now this is a loop back jersey and usually when I make a cocoa top I use Pontaroma but when I was looking for this particular colorway I couldn't find it in Pontaroma at the time and so I've I ordered a loop back jersey now the stripes are slightly wider than what I've made in the past but I think that will look absolutely fine but I just think it will look really nice under that plain sort of denim pinafore dress um you know it's just sort of a classic look really and will just see me through all of the months of the year um, and with this being a loop back jersey I do find that it doesn't bobble like a Pontaroma does so hopefully this one will last me a lot longer than my previous one did because I did wear that to death it it got holes in it and um, I think it got stains from my deodorant and that kind of thing and it bobbled quite a lot as well so yeah hopefully that one will last a bit longer so that's what I need to get done is a cocoa top. I'm also doing a pattern test for Julia at Bobbins and Buttons as well now I think it was last year I made a really cute dress for my neighbour's little girl if I've got the photo I'll put an in here so you can have a look at what that looked like and it was a really nice sort of a-line style dress with some frills over the shoulders and some i think it got princess seams where then it incorporated some pockets as well it was a really nice so really really enjoyed it and i think a lot of people had said to julie you know you ought to bring out a adults version of that so that's what she's done and i'm going to be pattern testing that um so i need to just get that done over the next week or so as well so i'm just waiting for the pattern to arrive as i've had it printed in a zero size so I can't wait to do that. I've got some fabric lined up for it. So I hope I've got enough because on the pattern, it said that it needed three meters and I've only got two, but I'm going to see if I can do a bit of pattern Tetris because it's a non-directional print that I've got. So hopefully that will work and I'll be excited to share that with you as and when I can. 
so i think that's everything with my sewing and crafting uh, for my update for you at the moment so um yeah this weekend is actually the leicester half marathon so as you know i was supposed to do the leicester marathon two years ago it got cancelled because of flooding and also i was injured and then last year it got cancelled obviously because of the pandemic and then this year i was in two minds as to whether it was going to be going ahead and then we got the notification that it just was just going to be the half so i've been training for that which i think was partly why i was quite tired uh, before we went on holiday so yeah it's this sunday and i've looked at the forecast and i think it's going to be quite wet unfortunately which uh it's a bit of a shame it's been really windy actually over the last few days as well so i'm really hoping that that's going to die down because that is not going to play in my favor if it's really windy um but we'll see how we go i just i'm going to try and enjoy it and get around without stopping i'm not really going for a specific time i'm not as fit as i used to be i don't run half as much as i used to so i know i'm not going to be able to do it as quick as i used to i can still sort of sustain the time that i i run for if you know what i mean i can i can run without stopping and do the mileage it's just that the speed isn't there like it used to be so yeah i'm just going to enjoy it and have fun getting around on the day but tomorrow um which is saturday my son harry he's actually going to be doing his first ever cross country race so i'm going to be going along with him and supporting him on that i'm really excited for him he's been doing cross country after school once a week and um this is the second race so we couldn't do the first one i think it must have been when we were away so this is the second one so he's going to be doing that so i'm really looking forward to seeing how he gets on he always tells me that he's really fast and is like always one of the winners so see if that's true um yeah bless him so i'm really looking forward to that so that is it for today so thank you ever so much for joining me i hope you've enjoyed what you've seen please do give me that all important thumbs up and subscribe if you've not already done so and i shall see you very soon with my next update take care bye